So Vladimir Putin will remain the Russian president till 2030. Leaders from the global north and the western press have joined hands to condemn the elections. But not everyone is sad. We will tell you all about it. But before that, if you're a fan of non-corporate funded free news and analysis, you've landed on the right YouTube channel. We publish three videos a day. First at 9.15 a.m. EST. Second at 1.30 p.m. EST. Third at 5.30 p.m. EST. So if that's of interest to you, stay away from people who envy your morning coffee count your fries, tally your ice cream scoops, and are generally sour over your successes. Okay, let's begin. In the wake of Vladimir Putin's landslide victory, reactions spanned the predictable spectrum, ranging from hearty congratulations to exasperated condemnations. <laughs> creating a mosaic of international sentiment that, if nothing else, showcased the art of diplomatic subtlety and the lack thereof. China's President Xi Jinping lauded Putin's re-election as a testament to the unwavering support of the Russian populace, foreseeing a future of grand achievements under Putin's stewardship. Meanwhile, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi looked forward to bolstering the special and privileged strategic partnership between their nations, painting a picture of mutual admiration and cooperation that is almost idyllic. Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela and Milorad Dodik from Bosnia shared their jubilation, seeing in Putin's triumph a signal of good fortune for the world and a reaffirmation of enduring friendships. These accolades were rich with warmth and solidarity. However, not everyone was ready to join in on the chorus. The White House, in a tone dripping with disbelief, pointed out the glaring issues of political opponents being jailed and potential rivals barred from running. The UK's David Cameron and Lithuania's Gabrielius Lance Burgess lamented the absence of freedom and fairness in the elections. The statements tinged with a frustration that seemed to say, here we go again. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. France and Germany, not to be outdone in their critique, denounced the election's legitimacy, particularly condemning the audacity of conducting polls in Ukrainian territories. Italy and the Czech Republic echoed this sentiment, deploring the so-called farcical nature of the electoral process under Putin's shadow. But perhaps the most scathing rebuke came from Ukraine's clown, who minced no words in calling Putin a power-hungry dictator whose rightful place was in a courtroom in The Hague, not the Kremlin. Zelensky's condemnation, a stark contrast with the congenial messages from Putin's allies, underscored that the midget is still some spanking away from an unconditional surrender. The West's frustrated reaction seemed less like concerns over electoral integrity and more like exasperated sighs at a performance that they just want to end. Yet amidst these varied responses, one thing remained clear. Putin's victory, whether celebrated or condemned, was a moment of significant political theatre, showcasing the elaborate dance of diplomacy where every step, misstep and gesture holds deeper meanings. In a world where fiction often masquerades as fact, the tale of MI6 plus CIA prodigy Alexei Navalny, famously cast by the Western press as poised to dethrone Putin, unfolded with a touch of fine. Navalny's demise swiftly met with accusatory fingers pointed at Putin, painted a picture so vivid one could almost forget the 83% approval rating towering over Navalny's modest 2.5%. The narrative as spun by Western media framed Navalny as the formidable adversary Putin feared, a narrative while compelling overlooked a minor detail. Even on his best day, Navalny would have clinched a distant third in the race, not even close to a silver medal. This spectacle underscored by the West's deep-seated aversion to Putin has become a source of bemusement. Observing the West's collective meltdown, one might find a guilty pleasure in the theatrics of international politics, with the lines between reality and paranoia blur, and the distinction between a genuine threat and a convenient scapegoat becomes as clear as mud. In this grand performance, the audience is treated to a masterclass in the art of belief where some lies told often enough become indistinguishable from truth, at least in the eyes of the beholders. But Putin has won an electoral victory, but this genius lady from Canada thinks Putin should and can be punished. She has everything it takes to defeat Putin, strictly as per her. If you want to laugh out loud, do watch this video.